<clears throat> hey, Sammy fam, Nom Nom Nation hungry folks. Sorry for my voice, I'm still a little bit under the weather. But I wanted to get a video out today. And you remember the other day when I did that uh, video on like what I eat during a normal day when I'm not filming? I made that delicious ranch sauce. Let me go ahead and remind you of that. So simple, so delicious. So we're gonna make it in the blender. It's really simple. Garlic, parsley, put a scoop of sour cream in here, buttermilk. I love that buttermilk ranch flavor. Mayonnaise. Is mayonnaise an instrument? Yes, yes it is. Somewhere around here I have some anchovies. And we're not gonna add any salt to this because the anchovies are all the salt we need. Worcestershire, however you say it. A little bit of liquid smoke, which is literally liquid smoke. People think it's like some weird, you know, chemical concoction. No, it's just smoke captured in water. And white pepper. So we can try actually grab the white pepper because it looks an awful lot like garlic powder and onion powder. Put a bunch of chives in here. Oh, it's gonna get loud. Looks delicious, so herby and fresh. Mmm, it's tangy, savory, oniony, garlicky. Beautiful salad dressing. And I have a bunch of that left over. So I want to use that in some way. And I'll let you see in a second what I'm going to do. This can be super tasty, super hot and juicy for a misty, rainy, damp day like today. So I hope you'll join me on this delicious journey. Hello again. Ooh. So I told you guys we were gonna do something fun, something interesting with all this leftover Ranch. Why couldn't I think of the word ranch? Maybe I'm having a stroke. But I decided I wanted to make a pizza. Super simple pizza because there's so much flavor in this ranch. I know you guys just saw the recipe real quick, but it's, you know, got anchovy, garlic, onion, parsley, then all our creamy elements, our buttermilk, sour cream, good mayonnaise. Mm. Worcestershire, liquid smoke, white pepper. It's an amazing ranch. And yes, my hands are clean. I just washed them. This is just a quick, easy way to get an even spread on your dough without dirtying up another utensil. And that looks good. Nice and green. And I'm gonna use this looks like shredded chicken probably on camera, but it is uh, just chopped up, marinated artichoke hearts. I love artichoke hearts on pizza, but I hate when they're like just big and chunky. You gotta have them, I like little bits so it's more spread out. That's kind of a theme on this pizza as you'll see with the next ingredient we're gonna do. I want every bite to be full of flavor. It's gonna go great with our ranch. Next we're gonna get some spice. We have our chopped up, kind of cubed pepperoni. I love pepperoni. And this has become my preferred method. Oh, that piece is too big. I'll have to eat it. My preferred method instead of like little round slices is cubing it up so you get this amazing distribution of pepperoni in every slice. I love it. It gives you a super pepperoni -y pizza. And as a man who loves pepperoni, that is right up my alley. A little bit more, a couple sparse spots. Cool. Now we have our mozzarella. This is a 
big block of fresh mozzarella cheese that I shredded. It's hard to shred mozzarella cheese, but if you're gonna do it, either for pizza I would do like slices, little rounds or something, and have that nice splotchy look as a pizza, that's kind of classic. Or shred it yourself very carefully so you don't cut your hands because the soft cheese is risky on the grater. But you can do it, you just have to be careful. Don't buy the pre-shredded mozzarella for a pizza because it's coated in like a cellulose coating, like a wood pulp, um, which is perfectly edible, but it keeps it from sticking together and clumping in the in the bag. They usually label them as like cellulose anti-clumping agent or something like that. But I'm not worried about clumping here. What I'm worried about is that cellulose will actually keep it from melting together nicely. And I don't want a wood cellulose covered pizza. And that's it. That's all we need for the pizza. It's going to be delicious. I have more ranch on the side if we need. Oh. I have stopped myself when we eat all this pepperoni raw. Now to get up and put this in a 550 degree oven. I've had it at 550 degrees for the past hour with a, a sheet of steel on the top rack in there so I can just slap the pizza onto that and it'll cook super fast, super nice and crispy crust. Come on. Ain't she beautiful? It's just a little too hard to get the leverage on it to cut it sitting down, so I'm gonna do this standing up. This is a mezzalina, it's a great little tool. Rock it back and forth. I know this looks probably slightly overdone to a lot of your standards, but if you guys have watched my videos for very long, you know that I love a crispy crust. Yep, look at how that holds, just straight across. And the bottom, not burnt, just nice and crispy. And I love how thin that is, and it is literally too hot to hold. Jesus. Pour out a little sauce for dipping. I'm getting sweaty just like standing, sitting here over it. But it may also be because in my small apartment, I've been running the oven at 550 degrees for almost like two hours now. But a big glass of cold water will help that out. Oh, how is there? That is a strength training exercise. I always keep a big glass container of water in the fridge. Um, just so we always have cold water, always be refreshed. Super nice. Started doing that. My wife got me into it. We originally had a, um, like a plastic pitcher, but we've been trying to like get plastic out of our lives in general. So went to glass. Uh, change most of our Tupperware to glass. We never put, if we use plastic, we don't put anything hot in it because that will release microplastics into your food. Now the next thing we're trying to do is get plastic-free tea, which turns out pretty much every tea brand, even if they say they're plastic-free, they either have plastic filaments in the bags or a resin. Uh, even if it's like a cloth or a paper bag, there'll be some plastic resin in there somehow. So we're switching over to like a loose leaf tea situation soon. It's just, it's so hard. It's like, how can everything have plastic in it? Like, I don't want that in my body. Ugh, we're just being poisoned and the FDA does not care. But this, this will be delicious. <laughs> that Irby Ranch on here. That's so good. It goes so well with the pepperoni and the mozzarella and the, um, the artichoke hearts. Like, you get the little flavor of the anchovy and the onion and the garlic. It's like a very subtly complex array of flavors, 
but since it's all blended together in that sauce oh and the light tanginess from the buttermilk too coming in on the back end like it doesn't seem like an overtopped pizza it's just there's complex flavor base underneath the the sharper toppings of the uh the hot pepperoni and the the marinated flavor of the artichoke heart this pizza is definitely a flavor bomb and like one of the best i've ever had i would be hard pressed to choose between this and like a traditional like basil -y red sauce pizza um so i could go either way but right now this is feeling like the best mm. though i realize the green sauce coming like melding with the white cheese looks crazy and weird it looks like an old moldy pizza kind of And the crust is just delightfully the right level of chew and crisp. Soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. So good, guys. I know it's not the prettiest pizza, but it is the best. I feel like this is a pizza you could serve in a bar and it will become one of those like bars that's like secretly famous for their very like simple non-pretentious food but secretly super super good Yeah, this and a PBR Tar Boy and a shot of Jameson. That's a Friday night. Or maybe a stag, if that's available to you. I miss those gold stag cans. I don't see them anywhere. I don't think they have distribution out here on the on the East Coast, but when I was in college in Columbia, Missouri, get my photojournalism degree at Mizzou um it was either stag or PBR were like the hipster beers you know that everybody had at their house and they weren't bad they weren't great with pizza especially Shakespeare's pizza of course I always gotta wrap the Shakespeare's cup one of my favorite pizza places in the world Shakespeare's Pizza, I would usually get um, pepperoni, red onion, artichoke heart. They got that cornmeal coated crust. It's so good, so fresh and amazing. Hot right out the oven. The environment's great. Being down there on 9th Street when I was in college was a really good time. And I grew up around there, so I was going since I was a little kid. course here in New York City there's great pizza a ton of places I have a few favorite spots but you know you feel less um, like cultural ownership of it like the spots I like here they're really good they're great but I feel less comfortable in them because it's like even though I've lived here over 10 years it's not my spot you know not my pizza place. But I hope maybe someday I can regain that in someplace else. Maybe I'd feel more commitment to a pizza place and attachment and ownership in a, uh, in a smaller town. I 
I have been looking at the housing market near some really good pizza places. It's actually a, one of the criteria, you know, for buying a house for me. And there are some great houses in New Haven, which has the best pizza in America. And it's on the last stop of Metro North, so that's convenient if you want to get into the city. It's in a college town, so it has good culture. The city of Albany also looks attractive. A little bit further away, it's on Amtrak, so a little more expensive to get into the city. But it's the state capital, that's nice. I gotta look into the pizza culture there. But it's in New York, so like, you feel like there must be at least a couple good pizza places because it's New York. And I'd still get to be technically a New Yorker. If I move to New Haven, what do you even call someone who lives in Connecticut? Connecticutite? Connecticutist? I don't, I don't even know. But the pizza's so good in New Haven, it doesn't even matter. This coal oven fire pizza. Mm. Technically, it's not even called pizza. It's called a pizza. With like an A in front of it. Or a pizza. My wife and I went to, um, wow, I can't remember the name of the most famous pizza place probably in America that's there. Um, Papa's? No, not Papa. What is it called? But I had, we had an anchovy pizza that was so good. I love anchovies, and the anchovies in the sauce are singing to me right now. And I still have all this left over. I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do with it. Chicken bacon ranch sandwich sounds good, or chicken bacon ranch pizza also. Dipping sauce for chicken nuggets. Ranch burger. But remember, let me know in the comments what your favorite uses for ranch are, because I might take advantage of some of your ideas. Frank Pepe's, that's the name of the place. That's why I wanted to say Papa, Pepe, Papa, Pepe, Papa, Pepe, Papa. Frank Pepe's in New Haven is amazing. There's also Sally's and there's also Modern, two other restaurants that apparently have amazing pizza. I have not gotten to try them yet because it's a bit of a trek between Brooklyn and there. Here in Brooklyn, I'm all about Speedy Romeo, which is amazing pizza that is somewhat inspired by St. Louis, thin crust, uh, not cracker crust though, but they do have Prevel on some of their pizzas, and I love Prevel cheese. And you can't get Prevel anywhere else in New York City. There's also Pizza Loves Emily. They make amazing pies, and they also make an amazing burger, a 28-day uh, dry HB burger. So good. Wildly expensive, but so good. On the cheaper end of things, um, there's Pasha, Pasha Pizza. I think it used to be called Pasha Pita and Pizza or something. It's kind of a Middle Eastern pizza place. And they have a slightly more like uniform crust. It doesn't get too puffy around the edges. 
but you can get like spicy lamb on it and stuff. Very good. And then there's a French pizza place here in Brooklyn called Nice Pizza, spelled N-I-C-E. So for the longest time, I thought it was a nice pizza. I'm like, why don't they call it great pizza? I just call it nice pizza. But in the Nice style of pizza, the, the city in France, French, the city in France, uh, the dough is a very light and airy pastry almost. It has like layers to it that come up as you bake. Oh, it's really, really good. But I haven't been to that restaurant since before the pandemic because we went there. We usually just got delivery from there, but went there in person one time. And the waiter was like very high or something. And he messed up my order and gave me a pizza with toppings that I just really didn't want and didn't like. I'm not a big mushroom on pizza guy. And he gave me this pizza with a ton of mushrooms on it. And so I was really disappointed. And then uh, like he brought out our water glasses and there was like this stuff floating in the water. It was dirty. So I haven't had it since then. But... I get delivery again, the pizza's good. They have like a white sauce pizza with like um, lardons on it or something, like little chunks of fatty ham. It's amazing. Look at how thin and crispy that is. Pepperoni on top of a pizza with a lot of anchovy in the sauce is a recipe for being thirsty. Does your jaw ever get tired when you're eating a bunch of pizza? It definitely happens to me. Thank you guys for watching this. I hope you enjoyed the idea of this pizza. Let me know your further ranch ideas in the comments. I'm gonna see if my wife might enjoy trying a slice or two or three. And I hope you're enjoying my new talking mukbang channel. I'm having a lot more fun making these. So I really hope that you guys enjoy watching them too. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Let me see if I can extricate myself. <laughs>